Hey guys, welcome back to Green to Great. Dave, welcome back. Good Thank to see you. you. It's good to be back. Uh, if you remember, Dave uh, had a cast on his hand for a couple of months. Um, broke his hand unloading some lumber. He's been out for about two months. He's back. Um, we did a Zoom meeting, I think, and then mm -hmm. we did the Weedy video just a few weeks ago where we installed the Weedy, which was kind of cool. It was, yeah, it was a really good learning experience. It was like the second time you've seen that, right? Yeah, yeah. So, and Jason Foley did a great job. Jason's um, great teaching that yeah he's a that stud system. total stud so today's video um we want to talk about what well lessons learned or looking back yeah i mean i've been back for a week now on site and, and i think there's been three uh learning moments that have come up in just this past week and they they've prompted some really good conversations between robin and me so we thought we'd put them together and share them what's the first one well, uh, kind of came up when uh, I made not a major mistake, but kind of a, a small. Uh, I cut something just. Just explain of, it. Yeah, what were you doing? Uh, I was cutting the skirt board for um, a set of stairs, and I cut it. I think maybe a quarter inch too short, and I was ready to go back and recut that piece. We had the stock, but uh, I kind of remember it as an inch short. I'm thinking. I, was I'm, it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was PVC, one by 12. So we're right. talking about a hundred foot, hundred dollar board, right? Yeah. Uh. Um, and so I was ready to go back and recut it, and it was my first time doing it, and and, and um, Brian kind of set me out on that and set me up for it. And uh, just as I was about ready to go back and cut a new one, you you know you you brought up the point that there's a difference between being a carpenter that makes the fewest amount of mistakes versus a carpenter that knows how to fix their right. mistakes. And I've always been in the mindset that I want to strive to be a carpenter that makes the fewest amount of mistakes Being possible. Perfect. Being perfect. Yeah. And, 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 and that, I think, is a good endeavor. You know, you don't want to make mistakes, but inevitably they're going to pop up and okay. you're going to make them. I think it's both. We talked about that. Right. One of my thought processes when you made that cut and it was too short was instead of getting another new fresh piece and doing it again and screwing that up or making another mistake, right? Because you were figuring this out his first time. Um, I wanted, I don't know if you remember what I said, is I said, leave it, we can fix that. Just keep going with it because if you get it right, we'll fix it. If you screw something else up, we'll scrap it. And my thought process was kind of giving you reps, right? So I was thinking in my head, okay, when he starts to cut the, the treads off and, and the transition for the first step, if he makes a mistake, great. We'll throw that right in the dumpster and then we'll cut that new piece and we'll, we'll w work with you and pay attention. But if you nailed it, then that was an opportunity to show you how to fix that board. Right. So we could have gone either way and we'll fix the board. Yeah. And I, I, admittedly, I get stuck in this mindset of, uh, like I said, trying to make the fewest amount of mistakes. Part of that is my individual ego as a person, sure. you know, to try and be the best I can. But another part of it too is being an apprentice, I feel this constant um, urgency to be better. You know, I'm looking around at the other guys that I work with. I'm like, oh man, that, that guy knows what he's doing. That guy knows what he's doing. He doesn't seem to make any mistakes. This guy cuts everything perfect. He measures. He knows all these numbers off the top mm. of his head. How do I get there? Well, I got to stop making mistakes. Yeah. yeah. And and you and, and Brian as well were, were both, uh, you know, really supportive in this particular instance of like, it's cool. It's fine. There's a way to fix it without having to cut something brand new. Right. And that's almost as um, that's valuable. That's experience. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I've had. I forget who told me. I think it was one of my mentors years ago. Said it's not the mistakes you make. It's how you fix those mistakes. Uh, and if you can fix something well, then a lot of times people can't see it. Sometimes, sometimes a mistake can be hidden by a seam of an overlapping molding or something or. Um, so you never really, you don't want to give up on it per se, unless again, we're striving for museum quality, right. it's got to be actually perfect. A lot of times it, it, it's not that important. It yeah. can be hidden well enough that nobody will see it. If you take your time and detail it right. And in this particular instance, Brian made a really good point about how he normally cuts that skirt board a little bit longer than it needs to be so that he can scribe yeah. that, that, that first riser board onto the skirt board. <laughs> And so making that mistake, I was like, oh, this, this actually works out better this way because now I can glue a little bit longer piece on and I can scribe and I can flush it up. You can still so make way it work. My, my right. riser board sits nice. You talked about ego, um, your ego you were talking about, but this egos, um, and we often talk about leadership and teamwork and um, our, our crew. Um, 
everyone has egos and everyone has pride and all that stuff. And then we work with subs and you see, you see some of the egos and some of the subs that we've come across. Um, I don't know, I'm not sure if it's in every trade or if it's just in the construction trades, but there's some serious strong egos. You know, we saw it, um, we saw it the other day on that delivery with the kid on the Moffat truck, right? So yeah. a little bit of an ego, a little bit of an attitude. Um, I often think that if a team and crew can get past that, the ego stuff and trust each other and trust in each other's abilities, but also help each other get through problems or work through problems. I often find, I think that uh, if you can check that ego at the door, the team can just accomplish so much. Yeah. You know, the crew can get a lot done if you're relying on each other and it's not like I'm all for myself and I'm gonna do this and whatever Dave does, Dave does. Or, yeah. All right, I'll show Dave that because Rob told me to, but I really don't wanna show him everything because I wanna keep all the secrets. And right. I really think if you could get your team to a point where the, you check the egos at the door and you work together, you, you, know, you could do some great stuff. Yeah, I, I, de I definitely wanna talk about the definition of teamwork and but one of the things that came up you mentioned the the guy driving the moffat the moffat truck yeah we had delivery. a big big lumber delivery for this for this new job that we're doing and we had to go i don't know what do you say about 70 80 yards oh that's a football field yeah. <laughs> it's huge yeah and to move all of this framing stock all this big two by six stock it would have taken us a long time and rob tipped the the moffat driver and i remember at the time thinking well, isn't that his job to drive them yeah, off totally. it and, yeah. and deliver materials to work? And I thought about it on a drive home, and what you had told me was that it would have taken maybe two guys an hour to move that stock. Maybe longer. Longer, longer. yeah. And one guy, maybe all day, who knows. Yeah. Um, that expense is significantly higher than a $20 tip to a Moffitt truck. Yeah, I, I personally would have paid $300 not to deal with that wood. <laughs> so what, what happened was we got an entire pallet of plywood half inch and three quarter, entire pallet of two by six, 10 footers, rafters, um, and a whole bunch of other stuff delivered. They delivered it uh, too soon, so it got dropped in the driveway. We weren't there, the job hadn't started yet. They were, I don't know, there was a crossing communication. So the drive, nobody calls us, they just dropped it in the driveway. Well, the job was in the backyard, like the back nine of this property. Um, double gate opens up, so when I showed up to scope the job out, I saw all this plywood and stuff. It's like, there's no way at 52 years old, I'm gonna carry, you know, three quarter sheets of plywood that long and not A, hurt myself and be sore for three or four days and useless on those job days. So, it's, you know, you gotta think smarter, work smarter, not harder. Um, $20 was, I wouldn't even blink an eye at $20 to tip this kid. So here's what happened. I called the lumber yard back and I said, you know, you guys delivered too early, you dropped in the driveway, we wanted it, uh, we talked about this, we wanted it dropped in the backyard. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, I said, look, no problem, we still need some more rafters, I need a couple more of this, that, and the other thing. Why don't we set up a delivery, I'll buy that from you guys, can you bring your Moffat truck back and have that moved? And I said, yeah, no problem. And I know this guy, he's a great guy, the, the manager, Archie. So they came to do it. Well, when the guy showed up to do it, the driver, he wasn't overly psyched about it. It wasn't his problem. Someone else had dropped that, not him. And so he was like, well, why do I have to deal with this problem? Well, 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 you work for the company that did it. So ultimately, you're part of the team. You need to fix the problem. And he, he, he get it. He was going to do it. But he wasn't overly psyched about it. Um, but when I, when I flipped him that $20 bill, though, he, he, he light, lit up, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Anything yeah. else I can help you guys with? You, want, you know, it's it's small gesture. And like I said, I would have paid 300 bucks to do that because right. I didn't want to lift it. And think about it. If you're... As a business owner, you bill out guys more than you pay them. But let's say you're you're, you're paying a carpenter 30, 35 bucks an hour, and you're billing them out at 65, 70 dollars an hour. Do you really think it's right to bill your client 75 bucks an hour to move lumber 300 feet, or is it just cheaper to pay 20 bucks yeah. and have the truck drop it? Yeah. So that's that's I think that's where I kind of came from, and it's a business sense that you kind of develop over time. And like I mean, listen, we've talked about it now for yeah. a few minutes, but I at the time uh it was just one of those things where i was like oh yeah that is not something that that i would have thought of in and as a business owner in that moment because I'm, I'm just i'm like oh i see a stack of lumber it's my job to move that lumber i was ready to start loading stuff up well, and moving it you, you know, know it's funny as a business owner you know and as an apprentice i want to teach you things um i want to teach you lots of different things in the field of remodeling for example we did a backsplash and we did it with jason because jason's done tons of tile <clears throat> But there's a, 
as a business owner, you have to weigh, you know, how long will it take you as a newly learning tile person to tile a floor and how good will it be, right? Because you got to get experience versus how well can you do it and how fast can you do it if you sub it to Jason or someone who's skilled to do it. And sometimes you have to weigh that. So that, that's where these decisions where it's sometimes better, cheaper, faster to hire the specialist to do it. Good example is insulation. Um, we could throw pink insulation in the wall all day long. We barely make our R codes, whereas we can um, pay Frank to come at a minimum, minimum spray. It, I think it's $1,200 for so many square feet. And he'll come and spray these walls for us. A, it'll be better than code. And B, we didn't have to deal with insulation. And so you have to weigh that. It's quality, quantity, speed, money. It's, it's all of these things kind of factored in. Yeah. Yeah, and that's... Uh definitely the, the the bigger part of the learning curve that I'm on is, yeah. is balancing all those different factors that that the leader of the company has to balance. I've been trying to along the way explain lots of these things. A lot of these things are business owner decisions and ideas but I find that if I share them with Dave now he's a smart guy and he processes these things and he, he sometimes even asks a question before you know I can take time to explain it. But I find that if I tell him why we're doing some of these things, you understand it. And moving forward, you anticipate on the next job. So it's, I think it's helpful to share these, these ideas. You wouldn't normally have this conversation with you know, a, a $10, $12, $15 an hour kid who's working with you lug, lugging lumber and pushing a broom all day. Um, and years ago, nobody would have these conversations with apprentices. You just yeah. didn't. Not until you were with the company for so many years. Um, my, my foot is... My idea is foot on the gas, you know, teach him, show him, explain to him as much as possible early on. Some of it will sink in and process. Some of it you'll see again and it'll process then. And I think he'll advance faster. That's my thought process with you. And it's felt that way. Yeah. From my perspective. So um, it makes for a good team. It certainly does. Yeah. It, it, you know, and that's, I think, <clears throat> thinking back on my teaching career, um, that was something that, kind of was a big part of my philosophy every day was like as the leader of this team in front of me this group of students were a team um, I, and I'm the leader I, I know what my students don't know for the most part and I kind of have to parcel out you know whatever learning experiences they need and other times I just need to dump a bunch of things on them and with the understanding that they're not going to pick it all up yeah, yeah, that's that's it. that's my as the leader in that classroom, my problem is to figure out what my students don't know and then help them solve that problem. Help them solve the as problem. As the student now, as the apprentice now, I have lots of problems. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out tons of things. Um, and that's why I rely on, on you and Brian to kind of fill in those well, we, gaps. We talked about um, it's okay to make mistakes. We've, we've, all, we've made a rule that you're allowed to make mistakes, right? So you make a mistake, that's how we're going to learn. Ask lots of questions. Hopefully we can catch the mistake before it happens, before we cut a $100 board or whatever. But it happens. So you make the mistake. Um, if you own that mistake, right? If the team owns the mistake, you can solve that problem. You can work towards fixing the problem. I've often, you know, it's, it's like lying, right? It, you know, don't, if you just admit you made the problem, we can fix it. The faster we know about the problem, the faster we can fix it fix it. If you try to sweep it under the rug, lie about it, hide it, don't own the mistake, whatever, hope nobody notices. A lot of times that becomes a problem later on. Like like we're looking at this job and we were squaring up the deck and it was half inch out of square, so we have to square it. Well, if you don't square the deck up, by the time you get to the roof, you've got that graduated error through the wall, through the rafters, the top place with joists, rafters, um, and now your, your roof is really messed up. So, have to own those mistakes. Yeah, and you know, I... It just feels like there really isn't any time for blame. You know, we move so quickly. Yeah. Projects are, are picking up and right now. In general, though, in our industry, we got to move. Yeah. You know? Yep. And you have to keep moving. There's really no time, it seems, to, to place blame. Um, nor is it really productive. And there is a difference, I think, between blaming somebody and critiquing somebody. You know, I've made mistakes that have cost the company money and have slowed us down. Mm. But the way that you and Brian have responded to it is, I'm, I'm not gonna make that mistake again. Because right. you took the time to 
critique my approach to it, critique my application of a tool to a And to we a showed problem. you how to solve it. One, I think yeah. one example comes to mind is the the shower glass yeah. blocking. Um, you forgot to or you put it wrong height, whatever it was. It was in the wrong place or it wasn't there. And the tile was up, right? Yeah. Um, and so we realized that when you looked at your notes, you realized your measurement was off the tub, not the floor, or off yeah. the floor, not the tub. So we knew our blocking was off based off of Dave's notes, which by the way is awesome that he takes notes. Um, Just took the wrong notes. <laughs> well, he took the wrong measurement. You, you, you referenced from the wrong yeah. point. So what we ended up doing is we went out in the hallway um, and we opened up the wall and we put the blocking in from the back side because we could do that. And he was devastated. He was hor horrified that we had to cut this wall open. It was a painted hallway. and. And Brian, and then me, you know, me talking to you on the phone, I think that day, I wasn't there that day, was, was like, we'll fix this. We're just gonna cut it open, we're gonna fix it. We're gonna put uh, blocking in, patch the drywall, hide it. Yes, it caught, it'll, it's probably a three or $400 mistake when it's all said and done when you factor time materials and the painter and the drywall and all that, but you just learned how to fix that mistake and you learned how to yeah. problem solve. You also learn how to add blocking to a shower that has tile. In the future, if we are doing some sort of aging in place for somebody, and they have an existing bathroom and you can get to the back side. Well, it's funny, we walked into that Newton job uh, my first day back and you were walking me through the site and uh, you pointed out in the bathroom and said, oh, this is the blocking for the for the glass door. I don't think you realize, you know, the connection there, but I'm like, that's exact, I'm glad that's there because if it wasn't there, I was gonna put it in. <laughs> <laughs> and I was gonna double up my blocking so that it could <laughs> Extra miss. wide. Yeah. Definitely not gonna miss, you can land a plane on it. <laughs> right. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, what else do you want to talk about? Do you want to mention anything else that, since you've been back, you've been uh, I mean, these three learning experiences, or these three talking points have been kind of the, the things that have been going through my head uh, since I've been back. And I don't know, that, that's just one of the, you know, people ask how I enjoy being in the trades versus being in the classroom. And these are the things that I love about being mm -hmm. in the trades, that there's this constant sense of, of teamwork that is necessary to complete projects and with that comes a, a high level of trust with your your colleagues yeah. you know yeah. and that's the thing that i really have enjoyed and, and missed when i was when i was hurt at home so it's just been really good being back with all the guys and and working again so we're you know? building a uh, 12 by, a 14 by 20 barn outbuilding um starting tomorrow really brian took the day off today's memorial day and um so dave and i work kind of like a half day, three quarter day. So what we did is we had the lumber delivered by that Moffat on Friday. Um, we had it situated in certain spots, right, to facilitate building. And today we went through, we cut about a hundred studs to length. We laid did out- Headers. Did headers. We laid out our sill plates. And top plates. Uh, and top plates. Uh, we cut our subfloor. Yep. And all our pieces. The only thing we didn't do is, is cut triples and studs under the windows and sill, um, window sill stuff, which we'll do on site. We cleaned um, and we laid out a bunch of stuff. So we basically what we did is we're putting the team in a better position tomorrow when it's time to start framing to really get some, it'll be a good jump on the day. We'll have a lot done that first day, yeah. I'm sure. Um, it'll be kind of good. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be a good project for us. So what do you say we, uh, we end the, um, we end the video on a toast. A toast. Today is Memorial Day, and uh, that's a quick toast. This is one of my favorite bourbons, sir. Dave, let's toast to uh, all the fallen service members, past and recent present, and to any veterans out there, thank you for your service. Cheers. Cheers. All right, guys. Well, that's it for Green to Great. Um, I'm not sure what we'll title this video, but I'll come up with something. And uh, hopefully, get, hopefully you guys like this. Please, if you do, leave a comment. We absolutely love hearing from you. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, please consider subscribing and even consider joining as a channel support member. I'm Rob Robillard. I'm Dave Buffini. We'll see you next time. Take care. See ya.